Welcome to the HerbWorks Podcast featuring Roger Drummer, the formulator at HerbWorks.com. An educator in the field of nutrition and Chinese herbalism, Roger has a unique ability to keep things simple by taking all the guesswork out of complicated health issues. HerbWorks is committed to helping you improve your health and enhance your life through herbs and common sense. Hi, welcome to the HerbWorks Podcast. This is Laura. And Roger Drummer. And today we are talking about more fat, more sex. I can barely even say it without laughing. (laughs) (laughs) All right, so the title is More Fat, More Sex. Um, We're talking about cholesterol, testosterone, natural alternatives for health. Yes. All right, tell me, why in the world would more fat equal more sex? Well, I want to get this point across. <laughs> Sorry, I just have to laugh again. I've been talking to a friend of mine, and actually I've had this conversation two or three times. And p- people complaining about having low testosterone, low sex drive. And in the conversation, because you know I'm in the health field, I dig around a bit and find out they all have very low cholesterol. The men that you've been talking to. The men I've been talking to have, they have low cholesterol. they have sex drive. Low cholesterol and... Find out they're on drugs to lower their cholesterol and find out that their testosterone is just in the, in the barrel. It's, it's, that's just to say it's at the bottom. At the bottom of, of the what barrel. They want it to be registered <laughs> as, right? And there's a connection to it. Okay, so you're saying there's a connection between the fat in your bloodstream and the amount of testosterone you have? Tell me the connection. In this case, there is a connection between your levels of cholesterol and your levels of testosterone. Really? And and the reason I want to talk about this today is not to just single out this one drug, because it's the same with almost anything you take. That if you're taking a radical drug, which you may need, and I'm not saying you can't take them, But if you're taking one, you have to realize that that is stopping some process in your body that might be used for something else. So if that's the case, you want to find out what that something else is and then compensate for it so that if you need that drug, you can take it without messing up some other process in your system. All right. So to me, it sounds like you're talking, as we generally end up, are talking, a different paradigm of looking at the body, right? right. As opposed to, so just a, it's not medical way. advice. It's not no, it's saying yes or way. no to drugs. I want, you to, I want you to just go, wow, I never thought of that. I just want to point out some things. And it's real easy with this one because I've had an experience with it myself. And because I'm a, a man who's over 60, I tend to talk to other men who are over 60. And okay, that's do when tell. a guy, let's, that's when let's a guy hear might this. have let's low hear this. testosterone anyway. All right. Do tell, Mr. Drummond. So, So here's the thing with drugs. Most of the drugs given out these days for heart disease are cholesterol-lowering drugs called statins. Right. Right. Um, I don't particularly see how they're very effective, but that's something you can work out with your doctor. But uh, I think the whole cholesterol story is very misunderstood and that they're attacking a symptom of something and not actually taking care of it. Well, sometimes which is what, medicine which is what does medicine that, does. Right? Sometimes. So, so anyway, sometimes in, it in saves this, your life with the same idea. Yeah, it's so. same, sometimes <laughs> it's life-saving. But it, within this story... You have a statin drug that you might be taking for your cholesterol. The way that works is it interferes with an enzyme in your liver that your body produces, which is then downstream is used to produce cholesterol. So you get rid of the enzyme, then you can't produce as much. That's the theory. It works. It works really well. That's why statin drugs work so yeah, well. So, well, that's why they to work. To lower your, your cholesterol. To lower okay, your cholesterol. So then what happens when your cholesterol well, is lowered affects here's a, here's other a functions couple, is Here's a couple saying. of problems with that. One of the problems is, is that same chemical or enzyme you want to call it is also used to make a nutrient called coenzyme Q10. Okay. Your body has to have coenzyme Q10 or it can't produce ATP 
in your cells, which is the molecule of energy that runs everything. And one of the two of the things that are really dependent on having great coenzyme Q10 for energy is your brain and your heart. So long term, there's actually studies that show long term, lowering your cholesterol, which you think is good for your heart, may give you congested heart failure. That is such an inverse crazy relationship. Uh, Now, you think that's crazy. Who came up with that theory? Well, if you really research it, when they discovered statin drugs, the original company actually applied for a patent for putting that drug out in a version with coenzyme Q10 in it because it knew it. that's what but happened. But that's not how they came It can't be sold. It's against the law to sell a nutrient with a drug in the United States. It's against the law. So that product never came out. But they don't really ever tell you to take coenzyme Q10 because of other issues right, so I won't all, want to get into. If but someone is taking a statin drug, they might want to look at medical research. They might want to look at taking coenzyme taking Q10 coenzyme because Q your heart absolutely has to have it. A congestive heart is a heart that can't make ATP. So it grows larger, producing more cells to make more energy because it can't make energy. So, you know, How does this relate to sex? <laughs> well, this relates to sex because I'm just showing Let's get you. To the sex part. I'm just showing you what happens <laughs> with certain drugs, right? So that same drug lowers your cholesterol. Well, cholesterol is a substance that's used to make your hormones. Yes. Right. So now, right. not only do they put you on a drug, they tell you eat a really low fat diet, right? Well, mm-hmm. if your diet is less than forty percent fat your testosterone is going to go down. Really? Yes. And so now... So you need a higher fat level You need anyway? fat. You need some fat to make, you know, your body uses... To make hormones. Certain fats to make hormones. So now your cholesterol is low because it's of and a drug. And your sex drive is too. And so over a period of time, your body has a harder time making testosterone. So now think about the fact that once you hit 50 or so, your testosterone naturally starts right, going naturally down. Right, naturally declines. And then you're taking a drug that that lowers your cholesterol, and now it doesn't have enough substance to make that testosterone out of. So you're kind of um, you're ganging kind of up. You're looking for some Viagra. You're ganging you're up on the aging <laughs> process by making it even harder for you to maintain your low testosterone, right? Wow. So... That's an interesting relationship that probably a lot of people haven't thought about. No, they don't think about it only. And I probably never would have figured it out if it wouldn't have happened to me. So, but you don't take statin drugs. No, I don't. But I had very abnormally low cholesterol for a long period of time. Due to something Due to my diet. My diet was very strict. I was a very strict vegetarian. Sometimes I wouldn't even eat an egg for a year or two. This is way before your ketogenic diet experience. Way, way back. Okay. This is, we're talking now in the 80s when I had this diet. Okay. And when I first kind of started figuring out that there was something wrong with having low cholesterol, because doctors think it's fantastic, your cholesterol. My cholesterol registered at around... 100, Mm -hmm. which is really low. Wasn't taking anything, right? So, but when I had it tested and they told me my cholesterol was 100, they told me something else, which was really disturbing that I had liver inflammation. They wanted me to get tested for hepatitis. No kidding. Yeah. This and you were what in your 20s? I was 26 at the time. Okay. Right around that age. So that didn't make any sense to me. So I started researching it a little bit. And what I found out was that um, cholesterol that's at 100 or below, if you have that level of cholesterol, once you reach the age of 60, you really increase your chances of having a certain type of a stroke because you don't have enough cholesterol to protect your brain. Now, this is the first time I ever heard of cholesterol being associated with brain. And this is what you found out? Back in the 80s? This was back in the 80s. And there was very little information to find out on all these things. But what they basically said that it it can cause a 10 to 20% increase in a type of aneurysm. Interesting. And a type of stroke that people rarely survived. Hmm. Now, 
I'm right away thinking, well, you know, I'm not 60, You're 20 but something. I'm not 60, you don't want to have but a stroke. why do I want to do that? Why do I, you know, I tried to raise my cholesterol, started eating eggs. My cholesterol didn't go up much. It was up around 120, but it was better than before. Mm -hmm. But once I raised my cholesterol even that little bit, my liver inflammation went away. Interesting. You know, the liver, this is a different way of thinking of your liver. Your liver loves to process, you know, fat. It loves beneficial fats. It's a blood organ. And your body, you know, needs a wide range of nutrients to build blood. And it likes beneficial fats. And, and so my liver was just a little bit uh, in balance because I didn't have any of that in my diet. I was doing that typical high-carb high sugar, exercising like crazy. Yeah, you were a triathlete. Not enough fatty acids in my diet, mm -hmm. basically. So I added some eggs and added some different fatty acids, and my liver loved it. Hmm. And so now fast forward to, you know, not that long ago, maybe 10 years ago, close to 10 years ago, I was living in Ohio at the time and went in for a routine test. Mm -hmm. And... My cholesterol now was 140. Okay, so right? my doctor higher thought, than 120 or what? Yeah, you my you doctor had. thought that was fantastic, right? And I've been doing a lot of research and just started to get into thinking about adding a lot of fat to my diet because the research was just starting to come out about beneficial fats and how we really need a lot more of it than what they ever thought. And then. It just so happens I had my testosterone checked while I was there, mm -hmm. and it was really low. It was 399, hmm. right? Now, this is how they test testosterone, just so you know. They have a chart, which goes from 400 to 1100. 1100 is usually a guy in his 20s who's, you know, buff, working out a bit, to even get it up there. You know, you're, you're doing great if you're between 1,000 and and 1100 that's that's a young man right in the okay. prime of his hormone life well i'm going to go down prime of his hormone i'm going to down here at 399 <laughs> right and he goes well that's not a problem you're right on the chart and i'm thinking yeah it is yeah, a problem buddy, i don't have problem. as much sexual energy as i want <laughs> it's 399 and then i said to him i go i'm going to raise my cholesterol my cholesterol is way too low he goes what do you want to do that for that's crazy you you have perfect cholesterol and i'm looking at him like no i'm not happy with this these numbers right <laughs> So I go home and I did this experiment. Do tell. I, this is when coconut oil started hitting the market. I went out and got me a, some coconut oil, and they said it was really good for you. And mm -hmm. so, and it, but they said it had a problem with your cholesterol; it would raise your cholesterol. Well, what they what they didn't tell you was that it always raised your good cholesterol. Right. Right. Your HDL, which is your high density lipoproteins, it mm -hmm. raised that and balanced your other ones. So I just. For an experiment, I took a tablespoon of coconut oil right out of the right. jar, and I ate it every morning, mm -hmm. right? Next time I went in and get my um, cholesterol checked, you know, and my testosterone, which was a few months later, I had brought my cholesterol up to about, I think it was 165 or somewhere mm -hmm. around there, 170, but my HDL went up. 25 to 40. You so know, the, it good really, part of it, the big the good jump. part of the HDL went much went higher, higher. For you, and then what happened with your testosterone? And my testosterone was up at 600. What? And I hadn't taken anything for my testosterone. I was doing the exact, all the same exact other stuff in my health. I just switched and started eating more fast. Had more avocados. That's ate so some funny. coconut oil. And I right? suppose your wife was happier. Yeah, everyone's happy. <laughs> I posted my number on my front door. In case you don't know, I'm his wife. So anyway, so then fast forward a few years later, right? And luckily for me, I got cancer. Luckily for you. All yeah. right, that's a pretty strange statement, Mr. Drummer. But well, now, go, now, go that I don't, now that I don't have it, I can make jokes about it. I right? see. So anyway, when I, in the process of figuring out my issues with cancer and my whole programs and all that... I went in and had all these blood tests. After I got rid of my cancer, you know, and by the way, I found out I had low vitamin D, which is related to, you know, mm -hmm. not only, you know, how your liver processes nutrients, how it deals with sun, but, you know, vitamin D production has to do with cholesterol too, right? Um, it has to do with the sun interacting with the cholesterol in your skin and transforming into vitamin D. Which so, is a whole other story. No, a whole other story. So anyway, I realized when I 
right before I got cancer, my vitamin D level was actually low, and it didn't make any sense because I'm an outdoor sun guy, and I live in Nevada. You know, so I've seen you walk around without your shirt. So anyway, in, uh, in that whole process, after I got it done, I went in for my yearly checkup, and while I was there, I just had them do every test I could possibly think of. And one was testosterone test. The other one was uh, cholesterol. cholesterol. Mm-hmm. And so I got my results back. And my cholesterol was now up to 200 because I'd been on the ketogenic diet and I was consuming a lot of fats, a lot of coconut oil. And a what lot portion of, of that was the HDL? Um, oh, 100. Mm. So it was an amazing amount of HDL. It was a perfect balance, 100 and 100 mm-hmm. of both, right? So I'm not worried about it at all. So, But I checked my testosterone and it was around 725. So now I have been consuming all these fats, really great fats, and my cholesterol, and my testosterone was up again. Mm-hmm. So, and you do have to, I'll point out at this moment that you are talking about high quality fats such as avocado oil, eggs, avocados. I don't coconut. eat avocado oil right, yeah. so much. I eat avocados, and I love them. And coconut oil, MCT, all eggs, of these really high-quality fats. A lot of times fats. when the yolk is runny, I like right. the, You're not eating icky stuff. No, I'm not what? eating icky stuff, a lot <clears throat> of walnuts, things like that. So now that was like in January. It was 725 or so. Around, let's say, June that year, I you know because I'm a manufacturer of herbal products, I was at a trade show, and someone gave me a 50-gram sample of this herb made out of fenugreek, mm-hmm. right? Like a fifty percent active ingredient, which fenugreek. is supposed to be helpful and it's an supposed to yet. help you be build testosterone. Oh, it helps you. And they have a study, a clinical study, showing it raised it a little bit of mm-hmm. a little bit. Yeah, it's right? long been used in Western. You know, and it, it raised your what they call free testosterone, the stuff you have access to mm-hmm. by like eight or ten points, and it raised your other cholesterol. Right. It wasn't mind blowing, but it was good. So you know, I had a sample. So. You know, I'm an herbalist. I love herbs. I just went home and ate it, you know. So <laughs> I spent about 30 days, and I ate that whole sample, right? Now, in the studies of that herb, you're only supposed to take 600 milligrams a day. Well, I was taking probably 1,000, mm-hmm. right? And I just did it along with my ketogenic diet, which means I'm on a high-fat diet again, right? And about – this was the beginning of June. I ate the whole sample. It took me probably four to five weeks. I – ate the sample. You know, it's it about six weeks. And then a couple months later, I went in and I was in one of my checkups again, you know. Was, Another cholesterol test. Because I get to check up every six months because of because cancer. Because of cancer, correct. So while I'm there, I, so just, get a, I just get a blood right. work and they let have. me order whatever I want. So I, I do my cholesterol and my, and my um, testosterone. Mm-hmm. So I get it back. My cholesterol is exactly the same as it was seven or eight months earlier. My testosterone now is 1,050. No. I have the, cl- the testosterone of a 20-year-old um, male who works out. <laughs> All right, is your so wife? My doctor I, I save my comment on that. My doctor, <laughs> my doctor says to me, you know, your cholesterol is a little high. I said, yeah, but look at my testosterone. <laughs> And he, he goes, yeah. He goes, yeah. This is like, okay. Well, you know, so here it is. What did I do? Um, I think that you were herb, a guy with low cholesterol and, and low, low testosterone. testosterone. You now completely I'm a guy. reverse that. I completely reverse. You're a guy with with good cholesterol, yeah. a high level of your HDL. You've got amazing testosterone, especially for someone in their 60s. Right. And you did that with your diet. With my diet and with that herb. Now, that herb never in any of the research raised testosterone that much. But I don't think they probably had those people combine it with beneficial fats. Right. So the and question so is, uh, when are you coming out with you, a sexual tonic? <laughs> well, I am someday. Some days. Not in the works right now. But the reality is, is that look at how, you know, that's just a really great way of seeing how your body does something on its own. You have to give it the building blocks to actually do it. I'm sure most of these people that are out you know, buying all these testosterone supplements never think about the fact that they need more fats in their diet. Right. They right. need more material to actually transform it. The herb will help, but by itself, it's just, you know, a minor thing. Things might go up, you know, five, six percent. 
But look what it happened to me. It was just like unbelievable. The amount, right. My free testosterone was just unreal, the, the level it went up to. And right. so... So you're talking about this oddly inverse relationship between people that lower their cholesterol and then may experience a low sex drive, especially if they're men, because of having lower amounts of the good kind of fat, HDL, to make hormones well, and precursors to Well, it's not the hormones. HDL you make hormones out of, it's the LDL, the, the low-density lipoprotein, okay. which everybody thinks is a bad cholesterol. It's not. It's the cholesterol molecule that's transporting your cholesterol out in your body to repair things. That's right. what cholesterol does. Your cholesterol is used to repair cellular damage and inflammation. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to have high cholesterol, lower your inflammation. Don't lower the cholesterol because if you do that, now you've got a body that has inflammation running rampant because you got rid of the one thing your body uses to fix it. Right. So, and so that's the whole issue with heart disease is the inflammation, not the cholesterol. Right. If you didn't have that, your body would just change its own cholesterol. Yeah. And you know, one of the things that you educate about a lot is um, not saying allopathic medicine, Western medicine is bad or evil or don't. Oh, no. Don't there's do so your, much great stuff about it. There's so much medicine. great stuff about it, especially functional medicine these days. But, but what you like to educate people about is. Take a look at your health from a holistic point of view, right? right? Take a look at the paradigm of when there's something that becomes a medical issue with our bodies, right. that we need to look at the cause, not just the symptoms. And if you can identify through research, as you often do, because you're a researcher, right. if you can identify that the cause of that is something such as systemic inflammation, that certain things can be treated um, or you can use the tool, I would say. You can change you can, your diet. You can change your diet. You can use your diet as a tool, which is not saying yes or no, don't use a drug, don't go to the doctor. I mean, it's a very different thing to simply say, take a look at the tools you have immediately available to you through your diet, through herbs, through your lifestyle, to use that as a tool to have a healthier life. And it just, it just depends on what, like say we're talking drugs, it depends on what it is. Let's say you went in and you have blood pressure that's 175 over 120. Um, you better take a drug. <laughs> you better go to the drugstore right when you get out of that doctor's office. That's dangerous. Right. You don't want to have an incident. But then you should go home and while you're taking this drug, find the diet that will actually help you eliminate the need for that drug. Don't accept that, hey, this is just how my body is, because that's not true. Your body is simply reacting to what you've been putting into it, and you find out what you're deficient in and what you need to naturally correct it, and you're going to find out, wow, two months from now, I, I only need half of that. And then maybe four months, I don't need that anymore. My body's regulated itself. Right. And then you can get rid of it. But, you know, with blood pressure things, you don't want to mess with it right away. But cholesterol is a different issue. Rarely is it a life-threatening condition. You can go home and change your entire diet. Right. You can and so change all these everybody things. wants to know, I'm sure as they're listening, I, I want more sex. I want more testosterone. I want more sexual energy. So what specifically did you eat and what specific herbs do you produce or do you have a formula or you're having a formula coming out at some point? No, I, I, I don't have a formula. I'm, I'm not doing this to sell my own formula or anything. Mm -hmm. But I did use an herb that was called fenugreek extract. Mm -hmm. And the particular brand that um, they gave me, I don't mind saying it because they gave me higher testosterone. It's, <laughs> it's called Testofen. Give credit where credit is due. What it's was it called? called? Testofen. Testofen. You can find it on the internet. And okay. it's a really good product. But... I think it works much better combined with the diet. Now, the diet I was on in the beginning before I got cancer to raise my cholesterol and testosterone a little bit before that was just a high fat diet. You know, back you know, years ago, it started to become a trend of just put adding more beneficial fat to your diet. And I was doing that. But then that diet kind of morphed into the ketogenic diet. So it's a, just a 
another step down the road. But the reality is, if you look at all the diets, you're looking at paleo diet. We're going to have to do a show on just diets. But you look at paleo <laughs> diet, paleo diet, you know. Save it for the show. <laughs> but that's really just a whole food diet. Yeah. It's a great diet. And then you have the high fat diet, which is just kind of paleo with a little more emphasis on certain fats. And then, you, so I was kind of in this process of eating a lot better fat. So enjoying avocados, coconut oil, all these different mm-hmm. things, and mm-hmm. my body just started changing my hormone level. And then when I added that herb to it, it just kind of was the extra little push I needed to do that. And there are Chinese herbs that you know of and that you've worked with that also help the body make the hormones oh, that do. it needs. You know, in, in Chinese medicine, one of the, the most popular sex tonics is something called horny goat weed. And that's, well. and that's an herb called <laughs> epimidium. And the name is horny goat weed because that's how they discovered it. The farmers with their herds of goats noticed whenever they went up to this one plateau and they would all eat this one bush, they couldn't stop them from copulating out in the field. Excellent. So they, <laughs> being curious, curious guys themselves, they took the herb home and used it themselves. So. And horny, lives to tell the tale, apparently. Horny goat weed is an amazing herb. I have it in, in almost all my formulas, although I don't use it as a sex tonic because it's it's also a great herb for circulation, so it helps your brain. It's in it, your formulas? What formulas is it in? It's in uh, Inner Peace and Tian Chi. It's part really? of the basic herb formula because as a yang tonic, it raises your vital energy. It's really good for your adrenals. Hmm. And, you know, you change the effect of it by changing the dosing of things. I don't have a large dose of that in my formulas because that's not the direction that formula was moving. But on a long-term basis, it still helps your sexual energy because it makes your reproductive system, your whole kidney adrenal energy healthier. And that's part of your sexual energy. And that helps for both women and men. Women and men. Most people overlook this when they think about sexual energy. They think it's just testosterone and they think it's just, you know, levels of certain hormones. But your whole kidney adrenal is like the power pack to the lower part of your body. If your adrenals are weak, everything else is going to be off. Which is why chronic stress so much affects particularly women's reproductive health. Yes. Because we are much more subtle and uh, complicated in our hormonal makeup and how our hormones run our body than men's testosterone levels. Well, that might have been why um, that herb worked really great for me because I was taking my own formula, Inner Peace, which is Ah. great for your nervous system and your adrenals, Mm -hmm. which I always take, right? So I had that covered. And then I added this herb. It was like this huge bonus. You know what? That... To my mind, hearing you talk about it, that could very be well be why you had such a major effect using the fenugreek because you were already using inner peace. Well, that which deals with I the was taking energy. herbs for you know adaptogenic herbs for my nervous system mm-hmm. and stress. You know, right. and, so it and I had the high fat diet. It's like right. so it everything. It was this, the effect. It was a synergistic effect. So this don't make the mistake of just going out and buying just some fenugreek and not changing your diet and not dealing with your stress. But if you are, then that's going to be an amazing thing. I think it's an amazing herb. I think right. I have but I no think problem telling people that that's an yeah, amazing herb. But I, I think probably, as I'm hearing you say it, I do really think the amplification of the effects of that herb were most likely due to the fact that you were adding more oils, healthy oils to your diet, and you were taking inner peace, that you were already combining that with other adaptogenic herbs. And that's something that you talk about quite frequently is that when we switch our, our mind understanding, when we switch our paradigm to looking at health more from a gardener's point of view, right? That you're going to lift this. If it's deficient, you're going to squash that. If it's too much, it's, you have to put a lot of different things in place. You have to consider a lot of different options as opposed to a more allopathic model of this doesn't work. We're taking it out. We're replacing it. And there's a time and a place for that, quite time obviously. Place. Well, here's here's the mistake most people make. And, and a lot of people don't realize how heavily they are influenced by the drug industry. Because when they think of nutrition, they automatically think of it like a drug. 
They, right, they want that they one think, thing that you take. That's one, my point. There's a one yeah. vitamin somewhere I'm missing. I just take that pill and I'm right. done. Or if they're missing testosterone, they just take this thing. I just take that one pill and they right know. because that's an allopathic model of just take this drug and it's going to have this effect on the body, as opposed to a more holistic paradigm of saying. You need to look at a couple different factors and how those are influencing the total, the whole. You know, and I just happen to have a wealth of experience that around cholesterol and people and the drugs. I had a client once that had cholesterol that was 60, and he had extreme liver inflammation. And his doctors wanted him to quit taking all his nutritional supplements and all this because he, they were sure it was vitamins and supplements that gave him liver inflammation. Well, I put him on a really great program called uh, a three-egg sandwich with mayonnaise <laughs> every day and reduce his little bit of his drug, and his cholesterol went up to 125, and he has no liver inflammation at all, and he feels fantastic. Hmm. And so then I have, I have two or three friends that I find out their cholesterol is 60, just like this guy, and they have, you know... They're having to get testosterone injections. They're having pills. They have this new thing where they put a pill underneath the, your skin and, you know, things like that. They're doing pellets, and mm. and it's just an imbalance somewhere that they mm-hmm. need to figure out a better way to do that. Right, right, yeah. Well, this has been a fascinating talk on um, fat and sex. And um, anything else that you'd like to say? No, but I, after all this talk, I feel like some fat and sad. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we take a break at this point. <laughs> this has been Laura with the Herbworks Podcast. And Roger Drummer. And if you like the information, please go to herbworks.com. 